Welcome to the Holy Aligned YouTube channel, a braid of yoga, nutrition, and sacred living. I'm Kira. Such a warm, heartfelt welcome. Today is an invitation to get down on the floor. It doesn't matter if you don't have a mat. If there's hip or knee stuff, feel free to sit more openly and groundedly. So if Sukhasana, cross-legged pose, doesn't float your boat today, permit yourself to sit in another way. The real invitation in today's practice is to ignite a sacred flame in your own beating heart, in the four sacred chambers that pulse and create the rhythm. So you might like to lay a hand across your chest, maybe the other hand on top of it. A sigh out the mouth can be helpful, even sticking the tongue out. Lion style, Leo lion. And as you begin to let the eyes close, if indeed that serves you today in these moments, let this be a surrender of the eyelids to gravity. A surrender of the eyelids to gravity. So as you ripple up from the loamy soil, deep beneath your sitting bones and your formidable glute muscles, your buttock muscles, imagine rootlets sprouting from the base of the spine, deep into your ancestral roots, into the ashes of those who have done this earth walk before us, that we are the ancestors in living form now. So let the shoulders empty down away from the earlobes. And see how it feels to bring your awareness, your intimate awareness to the space right behind your own eyelids. And how something can just flutter awake in between the eyebrows. In many of the ancient wisdoms, this is a very powerful indwelling center. Whether we look to the yogic esoterica of the Ajna chakra, the third eye, or the upper Dantian, or simply this kindling and lightening of the inner lighthouse in the center of our head. When this is very busy and distracted, we're more likely to be in our threat system. You just let that be gently anointed. Send an anointing breath into the center of your brow. And then maybe another sigh, sticking the tongue out, loosen off the jaw, like a lioness roar. And then mouth softly sealed so we contain the prana within the vessel, the temple of the body. Drop in to the sensory experience of your hands. The upper arm bones becoming the elbow joints, becoming the forearms of our forefathers and foremothers. Our bones form in spirals, reminding us that healing happens in a spiral. It is not a linear trajectory. And to light up that radiance, the creative pulse in your own hands, and let it seep and saturate and soak into the four chambers of your heart. Notice your breathing. Noticing is the awakening. Noticing physical sensation, emotional debris, psychic noise is all a path that cracks us open revelations and insights. And then as you pour 
into the sanctuary of your heart. It's okay to notice if there's sadness or a flutter of grief wants to escape through a gasp out the mouth or a dagger of betrayal is stuck in the tissues of your mid back. What is the root cause of what you're feeling at the moment? We summon up the courage of the lion, the strength, the tenacity, that compassion is both fierce and tender. And drop once again into the feeling of your heart, away from intellectual pursuit, into the innate intelligence. And imagine a little version of you is dwelling in your heart. Maybe it's you at a younger age, maybe it's you 30 years from now in the wisdom of elder and you're striking a match. You're lighting the flame in your heart sowing a golden seed. What are you igniting? What are you inviting? To create the flame in your heart, just as the goddess Bridget in the Irish tradition is often depicted with a flame in her heart, the goddess of the iron mongers. How do we shapeshift iron ore? the red rock of Sedona to maybe breathe the color of orange, that bright flame, a color to awaken our creativity. And knowing that that is within you, allow the hands to release to your knees and just start to pulse the chest forwards and backwards. You're welcome to keep the eyes closed in these times of screen use. It's so beautiful. We can connect like this across worlds and oceans and cities and villages. But it's also so important in our sacred living that we come back to the body as often as we can. So it doesn't matter what it looks like, it's about how it feels to summon up our courage and to take action. What are the actions you need to take in your life at the moment from that flame? Keep your breath with you. And then come back to what feels like a central position without rigidity, without expectation. You might be in a period of convalescence where it's just very gentle. And then invite the hands to press into the dense air. The air becomes our friend as well, the air and the ether. And to use fire and air to innovate and create and spin our wounds into wisdom. You see how it feels to press the hands alive, like there's little mini flames starting to ignite off the tips and the contours of your fingers. Again, remember you can always unravel the legs. So we build our central strength in small steps. And this is a little bit of an endurance. If we consider the glyph or maybe you've seen a mountain goat in real life. I remember seeing them uh, in Peru when I was on one of my trainings over there a few years ago. These mountain goats, as if it was the easiest thing in the world, chomping on the mountain moss and grass that was really a sheer rock face. They're so sure-footed. So give your toes a wiggle Press even more, lighten even more into the hands, the arms, the shoulders are guardians of your heart. And then spin the palms to face up in a gesture of grace and receptivity. It's okay to bend the elbows, make it work for you. That's the embodied path, 
that our yoga needs to be embodied. It's not a rigid set of instructions. There's enough of that. And come into the clay body, which is a balance of discipline and surrender. And then come back to hands on heart. Drop the eyes closed in that gesture of surrendering the eyelids to gravity. Surrendering the eyelids to gravity. Breathe into the back of the heart. Feel your lower belly awaken on your exhale. It's called Uddiyana Banda, the plunging navel banda, meaning bond or lock. So when we create health in the Uddiyana Banda, we're actually creating health in the diaphragm. So a lot of emotional debris, a lot of mental agitation can get stuck at the diaphragmatic level. So on that note, with the hands staying to the heart, we start to circle the body. Sometimes, again, there's so many different cultures that influence body-mind practices. So if you're like a magpie, <laughs> like me, then take what resonates, but also in reverence, so we're not skipping over the depth. But these are sometimes called Sufi roles, coming from more of the priestess lineage, the priestesses who played their drums in temples and were then banned as the religious dogma took hold and took root. So again, this doesn't mean there's not merit in religion. And then change direction. What do you hold dear to your heart? What are the song lines you're longing to sing into the world? Breathe. Feel. Wonderful. We'll give the legs some freedom. Freedom. <laughs> and coming into Dandasana, our seated staff pose. So it doesn't have to look anything like my body. My body is my body. It's not your body. Your body is your body. So we're all in myriad processes. So as you ground and anchor again your rootlets into the loamy soil, imagining the bedrock or the tectonic plates that live deep in the earth, you might choose to bend the knees so there's clarity in the low back and that allows a conjurance of feeling of strength in the low belly so that over time with practice, with discipline in our sadhana, our psycho-spiritual practices, the body starts to respond. And then looking to the toes and offering the heart, that flame in your heart, that indwelling fire, that glow towards the feet. And the feet might do a little dance in delight for being recognized. Our feet get often so left out. So the plantar fascia, the soles of the feet gets a little bit of a stretch. And breathe, dandasana means staff pose. So perhaps like the priestesses in the temple, we stand strong in who we are, or like Merlin the wizard in his ancient apple orchard. Maybe he gifts us a bite of the sacred apple. This is all mythical and mystical symbolism of possibility. So Merlin's staff, a staff of power, podera, meaning to be able. Podera, the Latin word, to be able. Keep fluttering your flame towards your toes. It's okay if the mid-back is singing a sweet song. Maybe move something. Maybe the shoulders want to roll. We don't have to stay rigid. We're not a staff. We're just invoking that as an idea. And then bend up the knees. Nestle the feet to the texture of the floor you're on, whether it's a mat or a carpet or an ancient rug that you bought from some curious character of a faraway land. And then let the hands settle back, however feels comfortable in your wrists, and bloom the heart open again so that the heart opens towards the knees. Someone said to me once, uh, the knees are reservoirs for the heart. So what knee issues might be going on? I've had so many ongoing knee issues over the years. 
there's always, in my case, an emotional component. Uh, are we stuck in our moving forwards? If you want to lift the hips into a reverse tabletop, you can. Just really enjoy the all four corners of each foot here and the tremendous glute muscles of the buttocks helps to lift you up. You can come down at any point. You either look to the knees, if your neck has freedom and the shoulders are happy about it, you can let the head ease back. It took me a long time to get to this place, so please don't worry if it's a lot of pain and anguish. That's your body saying no for now. Let the seat melt down if you chose to lift it. And in this childlike embrace, we hug in. Feel free to hold behind the thighs if that gives more space to your shoulders. And just a gentle rocking. Loosen off tension from the feet. But really our healing is about letting go of tension. So the breath can flow. That's why the breath is such a profound indicator and ongoing companion of the inner state. And we have such adaptive capacity. So we, we grow our garden of interoceptive awareness, feeling from the inside. And maybe you close the eyes again and you visualize a lion, the power of the lion, the lioness. Maybe the roar of the lion to spur you on. And then easing into a position, we can call it Shavasana, but that feels comfortable. So although a short practice, it's so powerful to integrate it in a way that feels relaxing. So it doesn't have to be lying on your back if that doesn't serve you. You can always keep the knees bent or lengthen the legs long and then just drop into the body. The feet fall open, the shoulders melt. The whirl and swirl of your clarifying breath at the throat. And that fire, that glowing seed has been ignited in your heart. A sacred remembrance, a holy awakening. Keep letting yourself drop into the layers, the tissues, the organs, the bones. And just let yourself be. Let yourself receive this poetry, poems by David White from his collection, Everything is Waiting for You, Sometimes. Sometimes, if you move carefully through the forest, breathing like the ones in the old stories, who could cross a shimmering bed of dry leaves without a sound. You come to a place whose only task is to trouble you with tiny but frightening requests, conceived out of nowhere, but in this place, beginning to lead everywhere. Request to stop what you are doing right now and to stop what you are becoming while you do it. Questions that can make or unmake a life. Questions that have patiently waited for you. Questions that have no right to go 
away. You might choose to let your hands lay to your heart again, to that indwelling flame, feeling the burning questions inside of you that are yearning for an answer. To get powerful answers, we summon our courage to ask powerful questions of ourselves in the terrain of an honest mind. You are so welcome to remain relaxing, feeling what you're feeling. If you choose to meet me in a seat, which is entirely optional, we let hand meet hand in a gesture of collaborative union, in a gesture of togetherness, and bring the thumbs to your indwelling flame at the bony breastplate that's deep within your heart now. A little soaring eminence into the heart. Let me seal our practice. Namaste. The wisdom in me bows to the wisdom in you.